Welcome to our holiday series, sponsored by Clover and Judikins. In today's episode, I'm sharing how to take an ordinary Christmas stocking and turn it into something really special with the help of some products from Clover. using the large size needle felting mat as the base because it fits the cutter that I'm using. It does come in a small size too. This protects the surface from the sharp needles that you're using to felt and gives yourself a base for the felting process. I'm using a cookie cutter as a template. You can use molds or you can just free felt also. I'm using caramel colored wool roving to create the reindeer shape and I'm going to use Clover's needle felting tool. This tool has some neat features. It has a locking mechanism that when it's in place, this plastic protective cover will not move, so it helps to protect you from those very sharp needles. You just turn it and then it unlocks it and that clear plastic sleeve depresses as you do the felting process. Wool roving is used to felt, and this is the caramel color from Clover. Pull off some and push it into the mold, in this case the cookie cutter and you'll be ready to begin the felting process. To start the felting, you take your needle felting tool and you want to hold it vertically as straight up and down as you can. And be sure that it's in the unlocked position so that that shield will allow you to felt. In this case, I found it helpful to push my cookie cutter into that mat, the bristles on that mat a bit, to make the sides a bit shorter so that the needles would fully fit within to felt. Then you just begin pouncing the needles up and down as quickly as you can within the shape to begin the felting of the roving into the little felt shape. I wanted to make Rudolph um, out of my reindeer, so I decided to put some red roving into the nose and felt that in place. And to do that, I'm actually going to use the pen felting tool. Once that red roving was in place, I went back to the regular felting tool and began the process again. You want to compress those fibers as much as you can in the entire shape before proceeding. Now sometimes when you're doing the felting process, a needle will break. This is just from the nature of doing the motion and impressing the needles into the felt. But Clover has an answer for that. They have replacement needles and these are the heavy duty needles. And I'm going to show you how to replace the needle in the tool so that you can get back to felting quickly. Remove the outside cover on the end and there's a little metal disc inside. You just tip that out and then the needles just pull out. You figure out which one's got the broken end, pull it out and set it aside, and the new needle just fits into the hole where the other needle came out of. Replace that little metal disc, replace your cover, and you're ready to felt again. When you've got all that roving compressed nice and tight, it's time to flip the image over and do the back side. I just pulled my cookie cutter off and then gently lifted my reindeer from the brush base. And you can see that one side is still fuzzy, that's the side that was in the brush. And I placed it back into the cookie cutter, I just flipped my cookie cutter over, tucked him back inside, and then began felting again to compress all of the wool roving fibers on the back side.
Because the cookie cutter I'm using has some little small areas, I did take the pen felting tool and just push into those smaller areas to be sure that I fully compressed those fibers before I removed the cookie cutter for the last time. I lifted the cookie cutter off and carefully pulled him from the base and our little Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is ready to attach to the stocking. I did do the same process and created two bells with the red roving to be accents on either side of Rudolph on the stocking. To make the decorative tassels, I'm using Clover's Tassel Maker. This is the small tassel maker, which gives you three size options, one and three sixteenths, one and nine sixteenths, or two inch tassels, simply by adjusting the tool. To adjust the size, you simply turn the little wheels on the side and then the frame will slide up and down to create the different sizes. The wider it is, the larger the tassel will be. I want small tassels for this project so I'm going to leave the tool in the original size that it is to make the shorter tassels. You need yarn or embroidery floss or thread or twine or some sort of string to make your tassels. I'm using a thin Christmas green yarn and you begin by wrapping it around one of those white knobs on the side to kind of hold it in place and then you simply wrap it around the tool um, top to bottom. I want thin tassels so I'm only wrapping mine about five times. Once you've got the number of strands you want you just wrap it around the other side and trim it. The more yarn you wrap the thicker your tassel will be when finished. Cut an additional piece of the yarn and wrap it around the center of the pieces that you wrapped around the frame. Tie a good tight knot in the center. It's a good idea to add a second knot just to be sure that your tassel will hold good and tight. Then take your scissors and there's a great groove in the top and bottom of the tool. Insert the scissor tip into the groove and trim to release the yarn to create the tassel. The two longer pieces of yarn, these are the pieces that were wrapped around the knobs on the tool, will be used to hold your tassel in place. Cut an additional piece of yarn and this is what you're going to use to tie around the top of the tassel. I measured down about a quarter of an inch and tied it in a good tight knot around the top. Now it's time to trim the ends of the tassel to make them even and create the finished length of the tassel. For this project I made five of the green tassels that are all the same length and all the same size. Now it's time to put it all together. I'm going to be embellishing an inexpensive felt stocking from a dollar store, but of course you could make your own stocking from felt at home to customize it even further. I'm going to start by adding my tassels. Now this stocking happens to have a piece of decorative trim here that lifts up so I can tuck the ends of my tassels beneath it. You could also add a piece of ribbon over your ends if the stocking that you're working with does not have that type of decorative element. I determined how far I wanted my tassels to hang from the top portion and then trimmed them all to the right length and then spaced them out as evenly as I could along the front of the stocking. I'm using Fabri-Tac adhesive to hold my tassels in place so that I don't have to sew them in place. I like no stitch projects. Now it's time to add our little needle felted Rudolph. I just think he's so adorable. He had a little extra fuzz sticking off the back of his feet so I just took my scissor and trimmed that off and then I'm using the Fabri-Tac to glue him in place in the center of the top portion of the stocking. I'm gluing the little red bells that I felted on either side of him for accents. One of my favorite Christmas movies includes a song about silver and gold decorations. So I thought it would be perfect to add a little silver and gold to the stocking. 
I'm using Judikin's Rocks and these are Quicksilver. It's a chunky glass glitter and I just love the bold sparkle that it gives. And I use the Fabri-Tac adhesive because it does hold more than just fabric to make a little line across the top of that decorative piece of trim that was already on the stocking and then poured those rocks over the entire length of it and pressed them in place. So the silver's in place, now it's time for the gold. And I'm using some tiny gold beads to add the accents to the ringers on the bells. And I just glued those onto the little ringer portion of the felted bells. To return the glitter to the bottle to use the rest later, I don't want to waste this gorgeous glitter, I'm using Judykin's Snappy Tray. This is the handiest little tool for returning glitter or microbeads or seed beads or any small element back to its original container so that you don't waste it. I'm simply sprinkling the glitter into the tray and it has a spout which will allow it to return to the bottle. And now it's finished. I love the little accents that we've added to this stocking. I think it really helps make it special. The little dangling tassels are fun and the needle felted embellishments add a great depth. They're a great dimensional accent that really makes for a little special touch to this stocking. It takes something basic and inexpensive and turns it into a really special project. So let's hang it on the fireplace and wait for Santa to visit on Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas! We hope you're enjoying our holiday series. Please follow us on social media and sign up on our website and you'll be eligible to win one of our prize boxes full of products from some of our favorite sponsors. And as we always say, when creativity knocks, open the door.